Hello YouTube, my name is Marie. Today I'm doing a different kind of list video that has been on my mind for quite a while. What I think newbie K-drama watchers should know. If you're anything like me who started watching K-dramas years ago at this point but with zero cultural, historical, like contextual background on Korea, there were a few things that did confuse me. That This video is for the people like that who went into K-dramas with zero knowledge and I'm really just going to catch it up to speed. Now if you started watching K-dramas with a little bit more knowledge about Korea then these might be really obvious to you or if there was a completely other aspect of K-dramas that confused you at first I would love to hear it. Like I'm obviously not Korean. I've spent a month in Korea but that was not any sufficient length of time to really get engrossed in the culture. My knowledge comes from watching so much Korean TV and then also I'm currently working towards an Asian studies degree majoring in Korean culture and language. So that is my background, that's where my information is coming from. If any of it is incorrect, I would really appreciate you guys correcting me in a nice manner. <laughs> the first one I'm going to talk about is cultural differences, really focusing on some of the language aspects. So I live in Canada, I live on Vancouver Island, and I grew up in quite a small city with very little uh, diversity, <laughs> let's just be honest. But when I was watching K-dramas for the first time, I was a little bit surprised and also really intrigued by some of the cultural habits or norms where uh, elders anybody older than you is given much higher respect. The Korean language has a light or formal and informal speech but also many different layers within that speech. So there were instances when I was watching K-dramas, reading the subtitles, and I just wouldn't understand some of the moments where characters would be getting upset. If you're watching subtitles made by someone who truly cares, then often they'll put in brackets like dropped formal speech or like spoken informally or something like that, but oftentimes the older K-dramas that I was watching would not include that. So like characters would just all of a sudden be getting upset with each other being like why are you talking to me like that or like oh you're being rude and it's just like based on the subtitles alone I was missing that like cultural and language element like I couldn't understand based on the English translation because not only does this language distinction show politeness but it also indicates like a level of familiarity or intimacy with someone so often in k-dramas friends or sometimes really close-knit family members will talk informally to each other. Another element to the language that I thought was just so interesting and different from what I knew was the different titles that people had. Anybody older than you will have like a different title. It's very very rare for someone to address someone who's like of higher status by their first name. So you have these titles that are not translatable into English being oppa which is like if a girl is calling an older male who they're close to. So I have many guy friends and if they were older than me I might call them oppa. And oftentimes in K-dramas the dynamic between romantic relationships is of that of a younger woman and an older guy. So you have all of these like oppa relationships and hence the oppa craze. <laughs> All the Korea boos want to go find their Korean oppas. <laughs> but you also have other terms as well like ani which is when a man is calling an older woman who they're close to, they're, they're an ani and oh sorry I said that totally wrong. <laughs> Nuna. <laughs> Nuna is for male to older female. Ani is for female to older female. <laughs> I'm so glad I got that. And then you have hyung, which is like a man to an older man. Sambei is more used in like a working environment. Like you wouldn't say to a colleague, opa or your nuna or your anni, because it's just a little bit less appropriate for like the working environment. You might call them a sambei. So the reason why this definitely confused me when I first started watching K-dramas is the translation of this opa word specifically because a lot of times the subtitles would just say opa with 
no other explanation so like I often thought characters names were Opa and then the more you watch the more you see it translated like that and you're like they can't all be named Opa <laughs> it makes no sense um, and then another way that they translate it is just by putting in the character's name so you will hear the female character saying Opa but then it's translated as that character's name I think that is better but it does miss that context of intimacy and familiarity that comes with using the word. So the best subtitles I've seen were when they use the word Opa and then in brackets they say intimate title or something like that. Like, or sometimes they even translate it as just brother which is a really poor subtitle choice in my opinion because as an English viewer consuming it I instantly think that they mean like legit blood related brother so then when you have characters who are dating each other calling each other brother I'm like ooh, is this like the like English version of daddy like I don't like this <laughs> also really weird when you see um, other male characters getting jealous the person they have a crush on is calling someone their opa because you're like they're it's just their brother like why are you getting mad like sit down <laughs> underlying messages that are happening when they use the word opa and now you know <laughs> my second point is don't assume everything is an over dramatization for the purpose of tv i'm talking specifically here about workplace uh, sexism, bullying, fierce competitive nature of trying to find a job. I don't want to get too deep into any of these issues because I don't think I'll be ex able to explain them adequately with the time that I'm going to allow myself to talk about them, but Korea is definitely a patriarch society. The Confucian influences are still really embedded in a lot of people's minds, especially the older generations. So under Confucianism, women had three people that they had to be obedient to, being the father, the husband, and then the son. So right there you can see that like women were not really given a lot of agency or agency at all to like live their own lives. Um, also with Confucianism, really a woman's purpose is to have children. But when you watch these scenes um, where people like women are asked in an interview like oh when are you gonna get married? Like when are you gonna have kids? Don't just assume this is that this is an over dramatization because it's not. So women in Korea are generally the most educated demographic but that doesn't translate to them getting employment. They actually have the highest level of unemployment. The assumption a lot of companies make is that like hiring a female employee is less valuable long term than it is to hire a male employee because the female will inevitably quit once she gets married to raise her children. And I definitely fell into the trap when I first started watching K-dramas of thinking a lot of these scenes were just over dramatizations and not a real representation of life in Korea because when you watch K dramas, everything about Korea seems so advanced. So it's a little bit hard to reconcile as a viewer about how some place can be so advanced and yet have such backwards views. Oh, I hope I don't get in trouble. <laughs> I kind of touched on those first two points, but I didn't really talk about bullying and that's because I don't actually know a lot of statistics about bullying. All I can say is that when I have brought up severe bullying in videos in the past, I've had commenters saying, no, this is quite accurate. So again, I think you should take things that you watch with a grain of salt because it is for entertainment purposes. But not everything, you know, do your own research if it's something that you find shocking. Okay, so those first two categories were kind of heavy. My third one is product placement. <laughs> there are different um, broadcasting rules and legislation in Korea. Um, as I understand it, this is definitely not my area of study, so I might be wrong, but as I understand it, when they are airing, a show they don't really have commercial breaks or if they do it's at the half an hour mark so they've opened up investing in their TV show to producers so when you see someone like 
<laughs> drinking a beer with the label facing the camera, that's a product placement. They were paid to show that because they want to incorporate as many products and like advertisements into the show as possible because they don't have commercial breaks. This does not bug me. The only time that it has bugged me was in King Eternal Monarch because there was just so many and it was so obvious like they didn't even try to incorporate it into the story. But for the most part I find these really funny. <laughs> Another side of this is when they put like tape over logos. That's because you know they weren't paid to advertise this product so why would they give that that spot away for free you know and you see this most often with cars like they have a lot of tape over car logos and I just find it hilarious <laughs> so my next category is censorship this is why you see a lot of really stiff kisses in like k-dramas that came out like five ten years ago I definitely think that they are becoming a little bit more free or like scandalous with the physical touch in k-drama these days um another one is their um knives if you're watching like a crime show weapons will have like a blur out <laughs> again it doesn't bother me i think it's really funny i think it's sweet almost like i feel like being taken care of like you know like someone out there was trying to protect my innocence <laughs> let's blur out the knife Another great one is um, students smoking. Or I, I, it might have changed recently. I feel like I do recall seeing like students in uniforms smoking out of actual cigarettes. But most of the time, to like insinuate that someone is smoking when you know they're underage, they'll have a lollipop. You see this a lot in like K-pop music videos too. I know I definitely rambled a lot in this video, but a lot of these aspects just make me nerd out. So I hope you guys learned something or you also can laugh along with me of the time where you didn't understand these aspects of K-dramas. And yeah, a good day and a good night. Bye.